Hey Jody here. In this video I want to talk about pulse TIG settings. A certain set of pulse TIG settings for a very certain application. The reason I wanted to get this video out for this week is because we recently recorded an episode of the Welding Tips and Tricks podcast where we're talking about pulse TIG welding. And we referenced a previous episode where we had Alex Brown on. He's also known as Caveman Welder on Instagram. I don't know how many of you are on Instagram, but there is a very very good welding community on Instagram. Very inspirational, very humbling too to look at some of the pictures of, of the awesome welds some people are doing. He's, a, he's an awesome guy, an awesome welder, and he's willing to share information. So he shared some pulse settings for outside corner joints that he uses when he's having to do you know, kitchen tables and, and, and things for dairy factories and things like that. Using, using backing and chill bars, but then also a certain set of pulse settings. So I've got a demo set up here for you using these pulse settings that Alex shared, but before we get into that, let me just uh, let you listen to about a one minute excerpt from the podcast where Alex was our guest, sharing these settings and what he uses them for and the kind of work that he does. Here we go. This is Alex Brown. His company is TCR Performance in Bakersfield, California. I want to show you a few of his welds while I'll let you listen to that excerpt from the podcast where he was our guest. So could you share a little bit about what you've learned on that? Yeah. Um, let's say I've got a, um, uh, 16 gauge, you know, outside corner on a, uh, stainless steel. And first of all, I make it a point on stainless to get like pretty much a perfect fit up. And, um, a, a lot of the stuff I do as far as stainless fabrication does not require to have any filler, it, you know, just for doing the outside corner, stuff like that. And, um, I'm big into using chill blocks like to the extreme oh, yeah. to where it, it looks like boat. it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I like the welds that come out look like they were done in a purge chamber pretty much. So as far as that type of uh, outside corner, like if I'm doing long runs and I'm having to go 15 inches at a time or something, I'll set my pulser up at, at a low speed anywhere from 1 to 1 1.5. And then I'll have your, um, what is it, your, your peak time at 30. And then my background uh, will be anywhere from 5 to 15 uh, per percentage of the on-time amperage. Mm -hmm. And that just absolutely keeps the heat out. It's just easy to keep up with and puts a perfect-looking stack of dimes. I didn't even have to bother adding rod. I can usually use that technique and have a um, 16 gauge come out like basically warpage free and actually a lot of these things you know pans and stuff like that once i get done welding them if i sight down them and look at the reflection it, the only warpage is where i tacked them when i didn't have my chill uh, element set up and so it's kind of uh shows how much the the pulse settings can keep warpage down all right i've got a small test piece set up here it's about an eight inch long piece of 16 gauge stainless steel I've got it clamped against a block of aluminum, and I've just got a couple of chill bars, makeshift chill bars clamped pretty close to the weld, just testing things out, testing my gas flow out, testing these pulse parameters out, seeing how everything goes, and so far, so good. I'm going to go ahead and run it, run this piece all the way out, to get just to get a feel for it. This is, this is a set at those settings that Alex was talking about one and a half pulses per second and it really is pulling the heat out of that stainless to the point that I'm getting almost zero discoloration out of this thing and these are just carbon steel bars here ideally if I could get some blocks of copper that really pulls the heat out probably the best of anything for as far as using for chill bars but it's kinda of hard to get a hold of copper but even with the carbon steel you can see it's almost no discoloration there so it's doing a good job of chilling now let's talk about pulse here. Uh, there's basically three settings. There's pulses per second. There's percent of on time, also known as pulse width. That's a percentage of time that the pulse stays at the peak pulse, the high amperage pulse. And there's background current, which is a percentage of the peak amperage. It's also important to note that when you're using pulse settings like this, you're going to need quite a bit more amperage than you would without pulse. I've got this set on 110 amps and I'm doing 18 gauge carbon steel and I would probably only be using about 50 amps normally for that. Okay, so one and a half pulses a second, 30% on time and 5% background current. First I'm going to get some tack welds. I turn the pulse off but I set it all the way up to 110 amps and so I'm going to have to just very quickly tap the pedal. 
and I get a nice tight little small tack with no heat input hardly at all. Now you want to get some scrap and practice this before you start doing it on something that matters because it, it takes a little bit of practice to get the hang of. You can't have any gap. You, the pieces have to be touching. But what I do is I just usually prop the cup, make sure there's no gap at all, prop the cup and I point the electrode right where it touches the, the where the two pieces come together and then I tap the pedal very quickly and I get a quick burst tack. It's just really quick and easy. Now here's the piece set up here. Like I said, it's roughly three feet long. I'm using a piece of aluminum angle and then a couple of pieces of steel for for the chill bars. Now, uh, if this was stainless steel, I wouldn't want to contaminate that with, with carbon steel bars like this. But what I could do, if I didn't have anything else, I could just wrap these with some aluminum foil. A couple of layers of that with some tape and then it wouldn't contaminate and they'd probably do a better job of drawing the heat out. These are just some test plates from Triangle Engineering. They've got a, a little bit of a bevel on them. You don't really need a bevel. In fact, no bevel is probably better because it traps argon a little bit better. Here's what I do here with this one and a half pulses a second. As soon as it pulses, I try to move the electrode up and point it basically pretty close to the leading edge of the puddle before it high pulses again. And that gives me a way to, to keep track of my travel speed. And this work this works pretty well, I gotta admit. It would probably work a little bit better if I had aluminum drawing out the heat, but it's it's pulling a lot of heat out here. There's some very slight discoloration. The only the only issue is you just have to keep moving the chill bars. You can only run, you know, within the chill bars. But it's worth it. It really, really limits heat input. It really, really limits distortion. And you know, I'm I'm using these like again, these are seven inch long pieces. Uh, you could go longer than that, but you would need probably two clamps instead of one. But even at this, you know, for the few few seconds it takes me each time I ha I run that seven inches, well worth the effort to prevent distortion. I even stepped it up to two pulses a second, kind of speed up travel speed. That worked pretty pretty well too. And so there's very minimal distortion in this piece. Now it's only two inches wide, so there's going to be a little bit of a bow to it. But if this had any stiffness to it at all, it wouldn't have worked much at all. And there's the inside. You can see it almost looks like there was argon on there with that aluminum chill. There's no magic pulse setting that's going to eliminate distortion. There's no magic welding sequence or technique that will completely eliminate distortion. Usually you have to go to some great amount of effort on sheet metal. You know? But if you're doing something decorative, uh, the expectation is that it's going to look nice and smooth and instead it's doing this number and you can tell everywhere you tacked it. It just wants to bulge and warp and everything. Using chill blocks and, and backing bars uh, is, is well worth the effort. Now that involves having a lot of clamps. You don't have to have anything fancy for chill bars, you know. I save every piece of aluminum I can get my hands on. Uh, you know, anything around a foot long, six inches long, bar stock. Um, especially What especially comes in handy is some aluminum angle. Several pieces of this come in really handy. This is about a quarter inch wall uh, by about two inches. Super handy for, for stuff like this. Now, the piece that I was welding today is only like two inch, a two inch strip by about three feet long. Um, and, so, and so I was able to use something very simple like this to clamp the chill bars on. But a lot of times you need to get the clamping jaws in way far. And then, you know, something like this really, really comes in handy. Now this one is a, just one I modified with some chromoly tubing extensions. Um, works great, but you can buy them off the shelf like this. This is a Stronghand Tools model. Uh, it's got a little bit more adjustment on it out here and a swivel foot, so that can come in handy, but I have way too many clamps. Said no welder ever. All right, see you next time.